not stinking believe what time it is right now. 2.30. Going to the gym at 2.30. This is a freaking rare occurrence. I'm not going to know what to fucking do with myself for the rest of the day. <gasps> well, except to just, you know, eat a bunch of food. So that'll be the main idea. Well, I try not to hit 50 frat boys hopping into their minivan. But plan for today is to go as nuts as possible on legs. Hamstrings, I never have a problem going hard uh, in the sense that you know, my hamstring lifts are always pretty good. Even if I'm feeling a little sloppy, still strong, super pumped. Quads gets a little more finicky. For me, I don't know if I, like if I had to judge like which lifts are the most consistent in terms of kind of the quality and the enjoyment of the lift, or maybe not enjoyment, but just like subjective feeling, right? Like I could get pretty trash sleep, have a good arm day. Uh, same with back, shoulders, of course, but legs, and, uh, you know, I'm not saying I want to, if I have a chest day, I'm going to be like, oh, I don't need to get that much sleep, that's not what I'm trying to say, but, you know, some body parts for me, I don't have a problem lifting in, maybe, let's just call it a, uh, I was about to say an altered state, but, you know, maybe not in my perfectly prepped state of being fed, well-rested, and hydrated. But quads, uh, I, I feel like this is probably true for everybody, but I know it is for me. If I don't get good sleep, if I don't, you know, stay fully hydrated, get some electrolytes in my system, and I don't have a, well, those are the main two. Of course, on a bulk with all the food I'm eating, that does make me feel extra strong too. But if those factors aren't met, then I'm going to feel it when I go into the gym. Five plates on your fucking back feels way heavier when you're fucking dehydrated and it feels way fucking heavier when you're not well rested so luckily enough I feel as though I am both well yeah slept way in didn't have class today so kind of woke up at an unreasonable hour and then obviously chowing down a bunch of food put some electrolytes extra into the pre as well this is going to be a good leg day so, in terms of its style, uh, hamstrings, you know, heavy hamstring curls, at least four or five sets, kind of, you know, brutish, nasty, and then hamstrings is going to be done. Not too difficult for me. But quads, on the other hand, is going to be a bit more, maybe up to, in, <laughs> I was about to say up to interpretation. It's more up in the air for me. I know I'm going to do leg extensions heavy I'll probably even throw some extra weight onto the stack but I know I was just yipping about you know how I'm gonna start really just pushing the weight hard but about two back days ago, no two leg days ago whichever the last leg day was that I was squatting uh, I kind of tweaked my back a little bit uh, not to the point of like you know I'm really worried about it but I could tell after that leg day I was pretty fucking sore because I did three sets of five plate squats instead of two. And the first set, nine reps, good, felt nice and stable. Second set, eight reps, heavier, but you know, still good. But when I went in for the third set, my lower back was so fatigued, uh, I could tell that it was kind of extra wobbly. And I did one rep that was real wobbly, like my hips were moving back and forth on the way up. So. I could feel just a little tenderness. And I'd say classic rule book, uh, or basic rule, if it hurts, what do you think? If something hurts you, should you do it? Probably not. In a lifting context, definitely not. You know, like, oh yeah, my fucking shoulder really hurts whenever I do flat bench, uh, but not when I do shoulder press, or not when I do... Uh, Machine press, okay, then just do machine press, don't do the fucking bench. If something hurts you, then all you're doing is kind of re-injuring it and aggravating it, you know, so do a little bit of PT and take some time off. If leg extensions destroy your knees, you just can't do it, does it make sense to try to? 
Probably not, you know, maybe focus on pressing, maybe focus on um, split squats or lunges, I guess. You know, whatever, you gotta make do. So I'll, uh, I'll see how I feel there. But even if all the quad day ends up being is mainly leg extensions and, you know, potentially some supersets with a machine leg press and some sissy squats, even if that's all the quad day ends up being, I'm still going to be satisfied with it. I do want to get more heavy pressing in, but of course I don't want to fucking hurt myself in the process. So quads will be whatever feels good. But no matter what the workout ends up being, tons of squats, tons of leg extensions, tons of leg press, whatever, my quads are still going to be fucking wrecked. I could tell even, <laughs> even putting my little, uh, like shorts on under the pants, I could tell that they're getting tight. Uh, like tighter than normal, so I'm definitely uh, feeling the results of growing. But I said this at the end of the last video. Don't don't worry. The bulk is not ending anytime soon. Uh, it's not like I have a specific number or a specific weight goal in mind. Really, I just want to get I want to you know, get big, get heavy as I can, as long as I can. And then if I'm if I ever get plateaued and I really can't push past, like. Like, let's say I get to 260 and I just can't break 260 no matter how hard I try. Um, of course, all I, I'll, all I would have to do is eat more food. But you do reach a point where that gets very difficult. And it may be in your best interest, you know, just say, all right, proper bulk, got heavy. Now let's do a cut, reset my system, come back stronger for the next one. Uh, so that'll pretty much be the cue. Um, and then... Same thing when I dive down. I'll get a point of I'll get to a point of leanness where I'm like, all right, I'm way leaner than I was when I started the cut, and I'm fucking hungry as shit now. Let's let's restart the bulk. So it's always um, it's always a state of progress for me in one way or another. Of course, I probably like bulking more because I'm actually building muscle. I'm making tangible gains, but. With that muscle gain, there's also some, you know, fat being deposited too, which I've got to deal with. So when I die down, right, the goal is to peel off some of that fat so I can bulk up again harder the next time. And then, of course, it's just fun to be fucking lean. Super fucking cool. But you got to remember, when you're lean, you're not growing. You're not making progress. You're definitely showing off the progress that you have made. But... I think, and this is just personal opinion, but the real work gets done when you're bulking up. But then again, I'm probably just saying that because for me, I have a harder time bulking than cutting. I don't have too hard of time. Right? I do make tangible gains. I do eat enough food to gain weight. But some people, their appetite is just on a different spectrum. Right? I'm probably right in the middle. I can diet down without too much issue. And I can bulk up without too much issue. But, you know, some more heavier set dudes, they've got a fucking hard time dieting down. Right? Their appetite is just higher. And I'm not saying that their metabolism is higher. Right? Everybody's metab everybody's burning four or no, everybody's getting four calories from every one gram of carb. Everyone's getting nine calories from every one gram of fat. You know, metabolism you know, like, oh I have a fast metabolism, I got like that's not the dictator of how this shit works. Now, you know, fast metabolism, slow metabolism, that's legit. But the point that I'm trying to say here is that the factor which is going to decide whether or not you're a hard gainer or I guess you're a hard cutter, you can't really die down so easily, is your appetite. Right? So a dude whose appetite is higher, he's going to be more inclined to just fucking eat a shit ton of food and have no problem doing it. In terms of gaining size, he's gonna have no fucking problem. But when he wants to, you know, trim down and reveal his abs, that's the real mental battle. And then more skinnier dudes, like guys walking around 140 diced, not even a lifter. That's just how they are. Naturally, their appetite is on the lower end. You know, they don't have a problem going fucking the whole day without eating anything, and then thinking like, "Oh, I'm kind of hungry. I'll have a, fu I'll have a, uh, I'll have a couple saltines before I go to bed." Know, some shit like that. So for him, naturally fucking lean all the time, but 
once he starts to you know, get that itch for more muscle, which I mean, every fucking guy in the world has, at least at some level deep down in the brain, you know, once that itch manifests, he's going to have a little more trouble because he's kind of fighting against his body's natural state, trying to push down more food than it really wants to eat. So just something to keep in mind. So if that's you, then you've got to accept the fact that, you know, bulking up, that's the challenging part. And then, you know, if you're more of the higher appetite kind of guy, then fuck man, for you, cutting down, that's the real challenge. So, you know, everybody's got different, what's the word I'm trying to think of here? Different, uh, well, everybody's got a different state of being, some with positives, some with negatives. Uh, you, know, you just got to be able to look at your own situation objectively and decide the best course for you. So be a man, start chowing down, even though your body may not like it. Or fucking put the fork down, start eating some keto bread with uh, low-fat mayonnaise turkey sandwiches. Try to move that scale down. But I think that's enough chit-chat for me. Uh, I... I the gym's probably going to be empty. Well, 2.30. Empty except for high schoolers. I guess we'll have to find out. But let's uh, let's just get fucking started. All right, I'm already kind of in the zone, so I don't want to spend a minute chatting yet. But full sack, plus a 25-pound plate, this should be something. Hmm. Okay. Let's lose the twenty five pounder, but I'm just going to spam these. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, yeah, let's just keep spamming these until, oh, until I feel like we're done. Oh my god. Probably three or four more. Oh my god. I mean, fuck, man. Same thing with arms yesterday. Oh, well, with triceps at least. All I did was like straight bar push downs, really fucking heavy. And sure, it was just one exercise for like seven or eight sets. And typically, you'd probably think one exercise, that's not enough. But I mean, the pump that I had from it, I feel like I'm hitting the whole tricep. And then same thing here. So, fuck you, man. I don't mind putting all my eggs in one basket. Sometimes. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 
Oh my god. Okay. I think two more. So obviously I know I'm fucking pumped. But one thing that's kind of funny, as I do these hamstring curls, the quad pad gets tighter and tighter and tighter because my hamstrings start getting fucking bigger to the point where I almost feel like I have to go up a notch than what I was doing in the beginning of the lift. But two more here. And then I'm definitely gonna start with leg extensions just because if I do squat, leg extensions are a really good primer for me. Uh, but we'll still have to see how everything feels. <laughs> Hamstrings are sufficiently fucking destroyed. They're pumped up to the point that I even have a little bit of trouble walking. Like, I feel like I'm just hobbling around. But let's hit leg extensions, spam them, and then go from there. Okay, I was about to kind of warm up to do a double leg full stack with like, you know, plate and a half, like a plate and a 25, but... Something about it felt a little funky. Also, you know, I gotta remember, I haven't used this leg extension for many months. So typically, it's always in my best interest if I do a new movement I've never done before, or maybe a machine that I haven't done for a little while, maybe I shouldn't try to overload it. Okay. But, whatever. So the shit around. Single leg, light, you get the gist. What this? Yeah, let's just spam single leg for a while. All right, a bit heavier on this one. At first, that was honestly kind of easy. Not in the sense of, well, I didn't really go that hard. It was kind of more of a warm-up set. So this one will be legit. <laughs> Uh, I gotta go even heavier. Okay. 
Fuck no, let's just do a few more. Heavier again. So, if you can't wrap your head around it, I love somehow fucking fidgeting a belt around the machine because it lets me lock myself into place without having to hold myself down with my arms, right? So I'm taking my traps, my forearms, and kind of part of my whole back out of the equation. So all I get to do is sit down and just fucking focus on my quads. Oh, sorry. Okay. Let's do some double leg sets next. Fuck it now. I feel crazy strong in leg extension today. This is nuts. No. Okay. Yeah. Let's do some hacks. Ah. Eesh. Oh my god. Got the Trend Twins music playing on the speakers in here. Okay, fine. Let's just go up there. That felt really good. Now let's repeat that for a few. So I know that seems kind of stupid to fail a rep and then literally just do another rep, but when I put my hips down, I was using my glutes a lot. My quads are fucking fired up to hell. That rep felt a little funky on my left knee. All right, so I went back to the leg extension for a little bit. Didn't record it. Just had some me time with two more sets of light squeezing sets. So let's see how the fucking quads are looking. By now, the hamstring pump will have kind of dissipated, but there should still be some residual blood in that area, even though, you know, Hamstrings aren't fully pumped. No. Yeah, my. yeah, I'm fucking out of breath. So the last set was leg extension straight into sissy squats to failure. Not bad. Oh, shit. Dude. Okay. I don't know if you're as in tune with my body as I am. Probably not. But, dude, this is a quad pump if I've ever fucking had one. Dude, I feel like those sissy squats on the Smith machine really pumped up my, uh, what is it, what's the outside one? Whatever. Just from, I don't know, kind of having close legs, but then flaring my knees out 
like this is how the 60 squats looked. Like I'm up top, light heels touching, and as I go down, instead of right in front of me like this, it was more like this. And as I came up, I could really feel the outside of my quads fucking firing. But, dude, yeah, this is a killer leg pump. And I'm a little bit light today. I woke up at 253, not 255 like yesterday. I, uh, I just did not eat enough food yesterday. But still, a fucking leg pump for the ages. Oh my fucking God. Like even just sitting here and doing a sissy squat, like, oh, oh. Dude, they are fucking fully inflated like a goddamn blimp. So don't worry, heavy squats will return. Those are not gone forever, but I want to give myself a little bit of time. I don't want to retweak my kind of lower back or anything. The last thing I'd ever want is like a herniated disc or something from doing a set of squats very heavy. And then, you know, having already maybe like a slight tweak and then just fucking worsening it to hell. So primary driver of weight today on quads was leg extensions, but those sissy squats were pretty fucking good too. So now all I get to do is go home and eat. Perfect ender of the day of a lifter. So let's get in the car. There we go. All right, so in the time of me going into the gym and leaving, it turned into a gosh dang winter freaking wonderland. So I'm gonna focus on that fucking spinning out and ended up in a ditch. But solid ass fucking leg day. So one thing that I really like that kind of still is kind of standing out to me is just how pumped my outer quads were after, well, after quad lift. But I know that it's from those sissy squats I was doing on the hack squat. Something about having my heels together, but pushing my knees outward. Maybe it's something about the stretch, I don't know. But my outer quad, like the sweep of it, was just fucking way bigger than normal. So I think those are definitely going to get thrown in. Not as a uh, not as a replacement for regular barbell squats, but just as maybe a secondary pressing movement for sure. One thing I like about it too is it's not so taxing. Because after I do a set of barbell squats, heavy, I need a, I need minutes to fucking you know, catch my breath and get ready to do it again. But with those hack squats, the fact that my kind of lower back isn't in the equation, because sure, I'm still like transferring the force through my spine up to my shoulders and into the pads of the, of the machine, but the stability factor makes the movement much easier on my body as a whole. So the only thing I have to focus on really is just you know, launching my quads in outer space. And those really heavy hamstring curls, that's a hamstring curl machine that I really fucking like. I think adding the 25 on that first set was a little bit unnecessary, but not too heavy. Just a touch too heavy. Just a touch too heavy. Ooh. So, now I'll just get to go home and fucking eat. So, I've been saying this, I'll just say it again. This is, well, just the fact that I've been doing consecutive bulks, you should be bigger every time. But this is definitely going to be my biggest bulk yet. And part of that is, of course, just the fact that I've you know, been bulking and cutting. The natural progression or the unnatural progression would be up, down, but I'm heavier at the end of that up and down than I was at the beginning. So, fully bulked. Fully bulked, cut. Fully bulked, cut. Right, and you look at it, it's an upward trend. So, just by nature of, you know, doing consecutive bulks like that, I will be heavier. But this bulk in particular is doing pretty well. Just because rather than launching myself straight up from my dieting calories to 5,000, right? Which, <sighs> oh. That sort of gives me a weight curve, like a weight gaining curve. That's a really drastic spike in the beginning, like 15 pounds of weight gain in one month. Not muscle, of course, that's really intramuscular water, like fluids and carbs and everything else. But after that, it really slows down. I fucking plateau every, every time for like two months, at least. You know? So with this bulk, I've kind of eased into it. 
Month one, I was just kind of eating when I was hungry. Not really much more than how much I was eating when I was dieting. And then month two, a little more. Month three, a little more. And then now we're actually starting to kind of get up in the 5,000 calorie range. So I think I'm going to... And even then, I'm still not doing 5,000 a day. Right? I'd say my average for the last like two weeks has been more like four and a half, maybe 4,000. So what I like about that is the fact that I'm as heavy as I've ever been. And I'm not eating as much food as I ever have. So I'm up at 255, you know, 254 in the morning after going to the bathroom, you know, your real morning weight just from eating, you know, four and a half thousand calories. So that means I've got another thousand that I can add in over the course of the next few months. Going above 5,500, it's not really maintainable for me, but getting up to 5,500, you know, I can do that. So over the course of the next few months, the calories will increase. Uh, and part of the mentality there is just to keep a steady, you know, stream of new stimulus, right? I'm almost progressively overloading calories. Well, not even almost. I am progressively overloading calories, right? If you bench 225, eventually you're going to get strong enough where it's just not enough for you. And in a bulking context, of course, there's more shit going on, which like metabolism and insulin sensitivity and whatever else. But in a very basic overarching sense, you're going to get used to a certain amount of calories and your body is going to show you that by staying the same weight. So if you want to change the result, you've got to change the stimulus. And that's something that I really need to fucking etch into your fucking deep into your mind, deep into your fucking soul. That the reason you're not gaining weight is because you're not eating enough fucking food. Right? If you've been plateaued for months and you think you're bulking and you think you're eating so much fucking food, you're just eating enough food to maintain where you're at now. And that, I mean, sure, it could feel like a lot. I'm not trying to, I'm not invalidating you because, like, I've been there before where I'm trying to eat a ton, but I'm not gaining any weight. Right? You kind of just have to be able to think to yourself, okay, fuck, I got to push it even harder than I already am if I want to keep getting results. And if you really think you're at the max and you just cannot actually get any more food in and you've done a pretty successful bulk you have gained weight but now you're just really plateaued you're at like the five month mark six month mark maybe then i think that's a good time to say okay this is a good bulk i gotta reset let's come back stronger after this cut do a two-month dieting phase the dieting phase i still do not mind dropping straight to low calories uh because i'm not doing a show the whole point of the dieting phase for me is just to get off some of the extra body fat that i put on during the bulk and then regain my appetite because after fucking six months of eating a crap ton of food at the end of this bulk man i'm not going to be hungry at all so when i start dieting down <laughs> the first week is the easiest like it's incredibly easy i'm not even hungry you know, my body is literally in a state like do not eat any more fucking food so when i started the last dieting phase the first like few days i was doing like 1300 calories and not because I was, like, trying to starve myself. Like, that's not an amount of calories that I could be sustained on in perpetuity. Right. But just from going from eating so much fucking food, you know, that first week of kind of reducing my, uh, you know, calorie intake and trying to increase my appetite, I'll get, it'll be like 3 o'clock and I'm like, yeah, I guess I should probably eat something. Or, you know, like that sort of thing. I mean, I'm not that crazy, but you get what I'm trying to get successful leg day chest tomorrow not exactly sure where i'm gonna lift but i know it'll be a good lift no matter where it is even if it's in the basement gym and if the snow keeps coming down like it is now i wouldn't be surprised if i'd have to just from goddamn snow emergency shutting everything down so that's all i gotta fucking say man keep lifting hard keep putting Keep chowing down if you're bulking up. Put your fucking... Shut your freezer door. Quit looking at the ice cream if you're trying to die down. And regardless, do some heavy-ass sets, man. As heavy as you can do. My uh, This is one thing that I sort of get a few comments on. How does my training change from bulking to dieting? And it's the same shit, man. Know, like we'll hear people talk about like oh I do higher reps before like a contest or uh, I, 
and I mean, there could be legit reasoning behind that. Because uh, like a bodybuilding show, maybe you wouldn't want so much inflammation. I could see that. But just a generalized lifter dieting, you should still be pushing your sets hard and trying to maintain your strength. Because, you know, mechanical tension, that's going to be the main fucking driver of your muscle maintenance. You know? If you started dieting down and you went into a calorie deficit, and then you stopped training altogether, you'd lose fat, but you'd also lose muscle at the same fucking time. So in a dining phase, the point of the weight training is to stimulate and maintain the muscle that you have on your fucking frame. Right? And in a bulking phase, the point of training is to stimulate your muscle to grow in tandem with an excess of calories. So in either case, of course, what that means is, you know, fucking tra train hard, you know. So there's no massive change in the style there's no massive change in like the approach. Of course, when I diet down, I am weaker. I don't have so many, so much carbs and shit floating around my system to work with. So I will be lifting, you know, lighter weights. But the like subjective difficulty of the sets is the same. You know. So even though I'm dieted down, and maybe I'll have to curl the 50s instead of the 80s. That's the fifties will still be as much as I can do. So I'm still trying to fucking push it like that. So no matter what phase of training you're in, really hard workouts will only do you good. And I stand by that one bazillion jillion fucking percent. So that's all I got. I'm gonna try not to spill it on these icy roads and I'll see you next time.